Hi, welcome to Two Non Doctors. I'm Liz Mealy. I'm Maria Shahada. Did what? did a little bit did, did a little part of you resent the countdown? Like you're just like ah, I'll speak when I want to speak. I I didn't I didn't I, at all. You just like paused, and I was like, oh no, what? <laughs> I'm I'm I think my brain is on a delay, so we'll see how oh, this good. goes. Yeah, no, I, I feel like my brain has gotten slower and slower. And uh, now I'm tired. So who knows what a double delay is going to be. Okay. Uh, I am tired also. Yeah. And I've had a perpetual headache for days, maybe weeks. I don't know. It's just always a low-grade tension headache. Hey, but that's not... <laughs> that's not good. Oh. <laughs> at all. That's okay. really bad. Okay. Well, I have an, an appointment with a doctor on the phone um, in a couple of weeks for, what was my problem? Oh, because because I had had that Google about my, my right shoulder hurting after I eat and it being connected to that nerve. But then mm-hmm. some, people, some people were like, yeah, you should get that checked out. And so, so some people in the comments of our YouTube. So I'm just going gonna, 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 gonna to bring it up. And then I'll just also bring up this low-grade headache I've had. That I thought just, was fine until you just reacted that way. <laughs> yeah, a low grade headache that's not going away is not good, and to ignore it is wild. It's one thing. It's like, like there's so many different factors that would just give you a headache in general. But if it's not going away, yeah. and I do, I do love that we use our fans as a as like parental. Yeah, like, 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 if if they're like, hey, you should go, you're like, oh, my mom fan said I need to go <laughs> to the I doctor. Know. They seem pretty <laughs> concerned, and I wasn't, but now I am. <laughs> yeah, I made fun of you the whole time. This one is, I'm concerned, but the other one yeah. was dumb. <laughs> yeah. Not that you're in pain, but I don't think it was connected to, there's so many things that I think is connected to diet. I don't know if... I don't know. You made it sound like you could predict the weather if you had. (laughs) Oh, my right shoulder's starting to hurt after I eat. That means there's going to be hurricanes. Yeah, Um, guys, Uh, you're going to need to board up your windows. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, How's it going? How's everything else? Good. I mean, I just got back literally... 8 a.m. because I had like a 6 a.m. flight from Cleveland. Um, I was only gone for like two days, but I haven't been sleeping well at general. And, you know, the road just makes everything worse. I apologize for yawning in people's ears. Um, Especially because Cleveland, I had three different people be like, I love your podcast. And I was like, oh, I don't even know what I say half the time. (laughs) Oh, guys, I love (laughs) I love hearing that. I'm like, you're going out there. And we're both getting complimented, so that's fun. Yeah, I'm just collecting them. <laughs> I just collect them for us. I'm just like, hey, I was out there. They gave us this. Um, <laughs> like, like I sent you like trick or treating. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm just drink. like, hey, do you want do you want the your funnies? I have four. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, like shows were good. I did. I'm just like catching up on work. I feel bad just in general because people would be like, did you love our fine city? And like in the last like couple of weeks touring, I'm like, I found a coffee shop that I like. Um, and then I sat there all day and did work. And then I showered and I came <laughs> yeah. to the show. Um, I like your and then where Starbucks. I, yeah. And where I was staying really sucked in Pittsburgh, which really colored uh, my experience. But I found, I was like angry about it. And then I found this coffee shop um, and I didn't have a car until um, my buddy Neil, who opens for me, until he got into town. So I walked a half hour to a coffee shop, um, which just in general, like, I really am learning a lot. Just walking, like, diffuses, just, it, like, shakes up the anger, or at least, like, gives it a place to be. Because, like, I'm realizing more and more I'll just, like, seethe in my apartment. And then even just, like, if I walked 10 minutes to the bank, I'm just, like, I'm a little less angry. But I walk a half hour, felt good to move my legs, and then um, they had a gluten-free pumpkin chocolate chip muffin, and I was like, fuck it, I'm mad, and it's (laughs) gluten-free. 
It was so good. Dude, it was so good. It took my anger from like a nine to a two. Like genuinely, that's how good this muffin was. I, I, it was, it was, okay. people's lives, so people's was lives were saved. Free, huh? People's, people's lives, lives were saved. Were saved. That yeah, muffin the- has no idea the kind of work it did. It's a hero. There should be it like is. a pumpkin, free pumpkin chocolate chip muffin day. Yeah. Um, just saying. That sounds amazing. I made like a pumpkin chocolate chip cookies like a couple of autumns ago. Um, they were cakey, which is kind of an issue when you cook with pumpkin, bake with pumpkin. I think it's because it's um, really wet. And if you don't get all the wetness out, then that water sort of steams. The, I don't know. I don't know anything about baking. I think it might steam the cookie, but it gets cake-like. Yeah. Um, and I, I got to tell you, Brits do not view pumpkin as a sweet thing. It's a squash in their mind. It's a savory. And uh, so it's a weird thing to be like, I made you pumpkin chocolate chips. It's like I would say like, oh, I made Brussels sprouts. Um, uh, yeah, Brussels sprout cake, caramel. Cake cookie. pops. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, you can keep that. No. Okay. Nope. Well, oh, oh, thank you so much. Just like dumb Americans just like throws it right in the trash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's I'm also like, I'm not a pumpkin spice latte like that. does. I'm not I I'm not going to pretend I'm not ingesting artificial flavors. I know I am. I know I am even when I don't know that I am. But I'd like to think. I can somewhat tell the difference sometimes. And I just feel like any, you know how like banana flavor, anything never actually tastes like banana. It's like, they just can't do it. You know what I mean? Whether it's it's candy or it doesn't taste like banana. It's weird. Banana, one of the best fruits, banana flavoring. I don't know if they're high. It never tastes anywhere close to it. It's the same with grape, but I thought, and then and then I had a grape once that I was like, this tastes like grape flavoring. Like, you can kind of see that there was yeah, something. Yeah, you're, like, oh, <laughs> you're like, you got nature, you nailed it. Um, yeah. But pumpkin spice, most things taste like chemicals to me. Like, I just, mm. I just hate it. But like a pumpkin, like in a, in a, I don't like pumpkin pie. I like pumpkin bread or any kind of. Mm. pumpkin muffin like that's i think because it's not overly sh- sweetened right it's just we're using the sweetness of the pumpkin to do i love we're talking the... about pumpkins right now it's so on brand for whenever this will come out like some yeah i know I, i'm dressed like a pumpkin like <laughs> you are <laughs> you look very odd me but also i don't know about you but like i do think i'm starting to have a little bit of new york city I know I'm a city person in general, like I just don't function well outside a city, but I've never been a foodie. So I've never like toured and been like, I need to go to the best restaurant or blah, 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 blah. I'm like, but like, I don't know, as I've like learned to cook, I've just become like 20% more food conscious and food excited. But like every time, almost everywhere, I get a muffin. It's just kind of dry and disappointing. Yeah. But I just, I needed something and I was like, ah, it has chocolate chips. It's, I'm going to get some kind of chocolate boost from this. And then it was a perfect muffin. And I, I need to, when I need to talk to, like, I feel like I need to call the bakery and be like, you did it. I swear to God, if you just cook with canned pumpkin, you'll find whatever you make is moist just because okay. it's pumpkin. So just, it's not, it's not magic. It's pumpkin. <laughs> it's pumpkin. It's pumpkin. I mean, yeah, that's the name of this episode now. <laughs> it's not magic, it's pumpkin. <laughs> what if it's like I just feel it's like girls go on dates in autumn and they're just like, I don't know, he was just so sweet and the way he looked at me and they're like, girl, it's not magic, it's, it's pumpkin. Magic. <laughs> it's pumpkin. <laughs> like, You're right. I didn't like him, I liked the muffin. I had no idea. I had no idea. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm. I actually don't like a lot of fall inspired desserts and stuff. Like it kind of bums me. I'm not like a pie person. I'm not a pumpkin flavor person. So 
you know, this is a really hard time for me. I do like apple cider and I like apple cider donuts. That'll stand. Really I stand by that. <laughs> it's a really hard time. Apple for cider me. donuts are so good. <laughs> they really. Are. I went. Me and Evan went for a hike last weekend with um, a friend and uh, and her, her his friend Amanda and um, her girlfriend g- boyfriend. Um, sorry, my cats are nuts right now. Um, Is that them so shaking have, the door? Let me in. <laughs> they're not even shaking the door. They're just they're like wind sprinting from one side to the other. Also, I came in this morning. I bought new treats. Like I bought two bags of treats. One is like, I've never done it before, but they have these little squeezable treats where you squeeze it out or whatever. And every cat on the internet loses their goddamn mind. So I got like regular yeah. treats and I got these squeezable treats and I'd given them some of the regular treats, but the squeezable ones are unopened. And then I have it in this container that has like a, like it's a metal container that has a clippy clip. And even if I just touch the container or do open the clippy clip, they come out of nowhere. Like that's how I get them out of her room is just opening the the container. Anyway, unless my brother gave them treats and didn't properly close it, I came in and all the tre- the treats were gone in both of the bags. The little wrappers with the, the squeezy stuff just eaten, just holes in them. It, it just holes everywhere, nothing inside. They ate probably so much tin foil or whatever the fuck it's wrapped in. And I don't know if they did it this morning, but they're high as a kite. Like, they're just wind spreading. I, I wonder what my neighbors think I am because they're so fat and they're so loud. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> I, did, I have new downstairs neighbors and I, like, legit avoided eye contact because I'm like, what is he? Does he think I jump rope? Like, I don't. That makes it worse. <laughs> I know. I did. I looked away. I, I literally I looked I away. Yeah, yeah, I'm just like, I'm so sorry. My cats are really fat. Um, <laughs> oh, dude, I, but yeah, so I, I think who knows how many cats, like they're supposed to be on a diet and they just ate two entire bags of treats through the packaging. It, they demolished Damn. the treats. Yeah. Through the packaging. It's insane. Aww. They're bad. They're bad cats. Yeah. I did have a good time. Uh, my- on the road um uh because i still have my cat jokes that i'm doing and i just you know whenever anybody's like i'll take lunchbox i just show them a picture of lunchbox and i had like a whole line of people showing me cat pictures and then because other people were waiting they turned around and showed the other people their cat pictures so then they got their cat pictures ready you know what you can't love fans more than just a line of people getting their cat pictures ready like they're at the airport trying to get their oh, their yeah, boarding pass ready for you and you're sweating. So you're signing books and everybody had their their cats like this is fluffy this is snuggles this is and then you know you're meeting all these cats and it was sweet and you guys are and i'm just like standing there like catless <laughs> yeah. uh, oh sorry but you froze that was so weird I'm there. yeah yeah it did freeze it did freeze yeah thank god i thought my story bombed for a second no no it was the internet um, um but yeah they're they're monsters and I miss them. I was watching the show called um, Chef's Table, Table Noodles. Chef's Table uh, so just, Noodles a, is the whole thing? Or is it like Chef's colon table noodles? Like show on Netflix and Chef's Table is a show on Netflix with like cooks. And I don't know. It focuses on food. It's for foodies. And then Noodles mm-hmm. is its own branch of Chef's Table. But what I'm learning is here in the UK... If they say noodles, they mean Asian noodles. They mean like Chinese noodles or whatever, any kind of noodles. It's Asian noodles. It's not spaghetti. Because when we say noodles, we could mean spaghetti. We can mean udon. Do you know what I mean? It could mean anything. Anything that's in the shape of a noodle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a cool noodle. Yeah. But, um, so, so in the first episode focused on a guy who, who went to Italy to like really study noodles. You gotta love those people. I love people who are like, my passion is wild rice. <laughs> I wanna find just, out everything I can. It's like uh, when you find out, like when you talk to like somebody and you're like, oh, what's your major? And, they're, and they just tell you something. They're just like, okay, uh, brick, but um, only the red brick. I don't, I don't fuck with any other colored brick. Yeah. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, and it's so specific and I, I just love that. And they're like, this, this is what I focus on. That's my thing. Yeah, I've learned um, the entire history of bricks, but only the red one. 
Yeah, but so but so he was focusing on like pasta, but they don't call pasta noodles here. So it was a thing. We, it was a discussion between me and Johnny for a while. <laughs> That's all. I feel like all I bring to the table for this podcast is the difference between the UK and the US. That's like all I ever talk about. <laughs> yeah, but people need to know. People have to know. I, I think about all the conversations I could have started and just like comically off because I'm just like, do you want to go get noodles? And they're just like, well, there's a Thai yeah. place over here. And I'm like, what an assumption. What a gross, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucked up assumption. Okay. <laughs> Could have been anything. I was really thinking like, the trattoria across the street, but fine. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, for me, I, I do think I say pasta if I mean like Italian. But I think if I was talking to a kid, I don't know. I do. Do you like noodles and butter? It's like, you know, spaghetti noodles and butter for kids. But you would say noodles. Like, if I said noodles in reference to spaghetti, you wouldn't be like, what? No. No, I don't think it would bother me. I don't think I would flinch. But I do think if I was talking to somebody, I'd be like, do you want, do you want pasta and butter? Or I would say specifically okay. spaghetti. Okay. Well, maybe it's just me. Guys. Comment. Guys, guys, <laughs> help me out here. Are you American, and do you say noodles in reference to pasta, or am I just an Ohioan or weird? All of the above. I don't know if I'm allowed to answer. Yeah. Also, I want to thank. We might as well get into announcements, but I want to thank everyone who sent. Like, because there was a point on one of the podcasts a few weeks ago where you got up and left, so I was like, "What are y'all listening to?" And then people responded and then sent me some great music. So oh really? I've, been, I've discovered a lot. I've discovered a lot from our fans, and I appreciate that. Oh, I love that. Really yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Um. um announcements. Yeah. Um. Th thanks, guys. <laughs> My brain's where I'm like, thanks, thanks, guys. Um. Uh. Thanks to anybody that's come out to to see me on tour. Um. Coming up, I'm in Bend, Oregon, and Portland, Oregon. And then I think Raleigh, and then I, ha I think I have something in Westchester, and then me and you are together in December in Baltimore and Batavia, all, all the B places. Um, so mm -hmm. everything is at lizmealy.com, and uh, come, come see a live show. Yeah, I have my reading November 10th at the Dally in Angel in London, and other than that, you'll see me with Liz. <laughs> And then yeah. randomly around London. You were so movie. You like you won't stop moving this whole it's, podcast. It's the kitties. I miss them. <laughs> and they're also being crazy. And I need cuddle. I need I need a podcast support system. Yes. Hi, Lunchbox. And um, thank you to all our patrons. You guys are great. I think we got a couple new ones. And um, thank yeah. you all so much. We appreciate that. Um, thank you to anyone who's tipped us. Has anyone tipped us? No. That's you can okay, tip us you on YouTube. Though, you <laughs> we'll get tips again. You can tip us on YouTube. Tips on music. The tips on music have been good. And um, <laughs> yeah, follow us on Instagram at two non doctors. It's the number two DRS. It's at two non DRS. And then uh, Twitter and YouTube is at two non doctors, number two forward doctors. Gmail at two non doctors, number two forward doctors. Um, but yeah. Have I rushed things? Should we get into our Google? It feels rushed. It's I'm nothing matters. <laughs> yeah. It was funny. Um, uh, th the green room in Pittsburgh. It was like you walked in the back. There was kind of like a kitchen area, and then you had to go up higher. And um, there was kind of couches downstairs too. So I was like, I was like two levels up, and um, Neil was about to go on stage, and he was like, and I was upstairs. He was like, Liz, Liz. And I was like, what? He was like, you have to say, have fun and nothing matters. And I go, what? He goes, you always tell me have fun and nothing matters. And I was like, I do. He's like, I need that. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. I was like, he was like, he was like, that's the best advice you could give anybody. And you always say that to me. And I was like, I'm sorry, bud. <laughs> like you, you know chased what? me. Yeah. Yeah. When I opened for you, you said that all the time too. And it does help because you're like, one, I'm opening for you, so I want to do good by you. But if you're saying nothing matters, then that's just some extra freedom right there. Yeah. And two, yeah, it's, it's a good moment to have fun and, you know, 
I'll still love you after this. A hundred percent. Like I, I think because like, especially, and I'll say it to, to even, you know, like, like, um, openers that I don't know, like I, there's just like a, like anxiety. You can see it like, as they're just like, I don't know, these aren't my fans. What if this doesn't go well? What if they're, I don't care, dude, like try, don't try. Yeah. I would like you to try, but like it's one show, <laughs> but it was yeah. so funny. He was like, Liz, Liz. He was like, if you don't say it to me, can I even go on stage? I was like, I don't know if you can, but I don't even know how you do this when I'm not around. It was very cute. It yeah. made me, because I don't, I don't think I like, you know, I say dumb shit all the time. I don't think I hear myself half the time, but it made me. No, happy. but we're all profoundly affected by it. Oh my God. Oh my God. You say dumb shit and then you just hop off and you're just like, whatever, bye. I'm going to go get pumpkin muffins. And we're like, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Change my life. <laughs> Um, uh, do you want to do googlies first? Before what? Oh, me go first. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> All right. Um, what connects your nail to your finger? <laughs> your Googles are getting ridiculous. Like truly. No, 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 they're good. Okay, please. Do, what is nature's nail glue? What is happening right now? What is it? What is it? That, here, here's why. Okay. Okay, please, please educate all of us for the question was, nobody asked. I was oh, no. chopping. Oh no! <laughs> the, the story doesn't get gruesome, but it's on the edge. So okay. I'm chopping. I'm chopping, and then oop! I chopped my finger, but I got the nail. I didn't get any skin. It didn't bleed. So the nail did its job. It protected me. Well, it's part of its okay. job. Yeah. Um, now, but now I've got this chopped nail that. Uh, I snag on things. So I have to wear a Band-Aid to prevent it from snagging because if mm -hmm. I snag it, it's too connected still. It it's hurts. too embedded in the bed. It hurts like a motherfucker. Yeah. So uh, I put a Band-Aid on it, but I was just like, now I got to like wait for it to grow out essentially before yeah. I can do anything with this. Um, so I'm just like, what is it that like, the, so there's the nail and then there's your finger, but like what's attached to it? So there's a whole anatomy to the nail that I didn't even... I wasn't prepared for. And so it's, I mean, it's connected to the nail bed essentially, but there's all these parts of the nail. Do you want to hear them? Uh, yeah, of course I do. I mean, the pause, I don't even get it. Like, why aren't you the most excited? <laughs> <laughs> Maria, please educate us. Yeah. <laughs> Lun Lunula, that's the white half moon cells on the base of your nail. Okay. Um, there's the sterile matrix. That's the area above the lunula, and it typically changes color beyond the germinal matrix. Now, see, now I'm confused because I'm like, I don't like the anatomy of the nail is like, what the hell is going on as it extends into the sterile matrix because cells no longer have nuclei after that time, which makes the nail appear more transparent. Um, this area is the next most common place where nail cells are made. Fingertip skin is connected to the sterile matrix. Then there's the germinal matrix. This is the area of the nail below the lunula, closest to the knuckle. An estimated 90% of nail production comes from the germinal matrix. This gives a natural curvature to the nail. Um, Perianchium, the structure that surrounds the nail plate, so that's like where you get your hangnails and stuff, and the cuticle, which we all know. And then, um, uh, I can't tell if you're listening. Cause your I'm, li I'm looking at my nails. I'm studying. Oh, you're looking at your nails. Oh, okay. Oh, um, I'm off camera. Sorry. I'm literally looking at my nails being like wild. Wild. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, I'm, I'm so very visual. <laughs> I have to stare at my hand. I got shit all over them, but, um, but yeah. And so, and then there's like, and nails will like continually grow, but like hair will like rest. So it's like hair does its thing and then it lets it go for a while, but nails are a constant and it's like yeah. keratin is what your hair and your nails are made of, which everyone knows. Um, so what's the what's nail that? bed? Like, huh? I was gonna say, it was that fun fact that, that, Every little brother loves to tell you that after you die, after you die, your nails still grow. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah that's a little brother fact. If you don't have a little brother, you don't know that. And going and going. What am I doing? What am I doing? I have no idea. Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Oh. <laughs> Although I don't know if he says "and going." Um, he's having a nightmare. I think. Uh, anyway, 
The nail bed is the skin tissue that sits under the nail plate. The nail plate is the nail. Okay. Providing support and nourishment to the nail. So if your nails are brittle and dry, that means your bed's probably brittle and dry. Anyway, I was learning a lot about nails. Girl, you got a brittle, dry bed. And they're like, what? No, no, no. Okay. I don't have dry nails. So I will say this. It seems like... So one of the reasons I don't like getting fake nails, and I got fake nails for my taping. They're gone now. But um, this is, I think, the second time I've gotten fake nails. Like, it's Gel X nails or whatever. But one of the problems is taking them off. They just fucking, even gel nail polish just ravages your nails. And they're just, like, sad Mm. for months. But now that I've done gel nails and the, the fake nails, the Gel X nails a couple of times, it's three months like t- like okay. down like t- down to the wire, three months. So depending on where like where in the nail did you cut it, like in the middle, right in the middle, right yeah. like it, like that's like in the middle. so like that truly is like a month and a half if it's right in the middle. Do you know what I mean? No. Because it's like now that I've done it's like three like if you're because like your nails get so like sad and brittle and whatever because I don't know if it's the lack of oxygen or just how they take the nails off and they're like sanding it down. They just fuck your nails so bad. And then you're like it's weird to be like my na- like I really do when I have like gel nail polish because I don't do it very often or fake nails. I'm just like I'm the prettiest I've ever been. And then you take it off and you're just like, eh, I hate myself. Like it's just <laughs> the complete opposite, and they're just so sad. And I'm just so focused on them, and it's three months. So I think in a month and a half, it's really going to come together for you. I also wonder. Yeah, if I it'll- estimated. Oh yeah, sorry. I was just saying I estimated it about a month and a half. Also, what what else were you saying? I was also wondering if, like, if you got a cut, you know what I mean, it starts to, you know, make new skin and heal itself and scab. Does Did you see anything, if a nail gets cut, if there's any, because it's completely different material. If you cut a nail, what, in the middle like I did? No, no, no. If you cut your skin, it it heals. It's, it creates a scab and it whatever, but, like... Does, is there anything to save a nail? Uh, give me the wording to Google that. Can your nail make scabs? <laughs> okay. I love us. Um. Like, I don't understand why your skin, if you're healthy, your skin, you know, it starts to repair itself. It's, it's your little lizard effect. This is you being a lizard. You can't make, like, a new hand, but you can, like, cut your skin, and then if it's not too deep, right, um, and you don't need stitches, yeah. it starts to heal itself. Um, I'm not finding anything. I'll try to see if I can... That's how you know our um, question's super dumb, when we're like, do you do your nail scab? Can you get nail scabs? like, what? <laughs> because, what you, you know... Have- I've never lost a toenail running, but I think like my dad's lost a toenail oh, running. I've heard of that happening. Didn't we interview a guest on this podcast and her toenail like had come off a few times? Yeah, I think too. I think we emailed a interviewed a runner. We inter- yeah, I think we interviewed yeah. a runner very like during the pandemic. Yeah, and she had toenails fall off. So that's the other thing is that like they they fall off and they just like grow back. Yeah. But I don't think they scab over. Yeah. But I know what you're saying. But uh, yeah. So. Okay. I. Oh. Uh, oh yeah. yeah go ahead. What was your Google? I have a non skin care Google because. Thanks. Yeah, I was criticized by my partner in crime. <laughs> um, okay. I had trouble like phrasing it, so. Essentially, I ran for years. And I know everybody was like, oh, your knees are going to pay for it. And it's just like, you don't know me. I was I was young and dumb. I was like, you don't know me. Do what I want. Um, so, you know, ran, 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 marathon, 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 some half marathons. And then I would say I stopped running long distance or like, like races. I don't know, like, I guess right before the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, I would say right before the pandemic. So let's say let's just say 2018, 2019. Let's say 2019 was my last race. And then I continued to run, but like not very much. I got into CrossFit 
And I would say I would run once or twice a week for like three miles. And then in the last year, I stopped running kind of, unless it was in the workout for CrossFit, which is usually more kind of sprinting. It's not a lot of long distance. I really didn't run. And I wanted to get back back into it. I bought like a little walking treadmill, a walking running treadmill in my apartment. And then my brother got really. Do you use Mm -hmm. that? Like, do you like I do. Yeah. Um, There's different kinds. Like there's this one. It can go up to like a a jog. Like you can't like I couldn't sprint on it or anything. Um, But I can clearly like do a power walk and I can do like a light jog on it. And it's. I don't know about you, but it's not even like weather related that would make me not want to go outside. I just had this moment where I'm like, I just want to do 20 minutes and I don't want to have to, I don't know. I don't want to be around people. Like I just want to like a gym, watch TV and, and run a bit. And I'll do like a run walk. Like I'll, 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 um, walk during the program that I'm watching and then I'll run during the commercials and then I walk. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I, I, yeah. And it's just, it's something. I am really bad that like on a day that I'm working out, I swear to God, I like go to the post office and I go to the bank and I see a friend and I work out and I'll get like 20,000 steps. And then the next day is usually a non-workout day and I get seven steps. Like it looks like it looks like (laughs) I didn't get out of bed. Like it's insane. So I was trying to on the non-workout days at least move my body and that could be walking for an hour or run walking or something. Anyway, and then Sammy got into running. Uh, my brother's really into running, and he's running like eight miles every day, every other day. He's running a crazy amount that, like, if I hadn't had my running past, I'd be like, this guy's crazy. But I'm just like, so proud of him. It just bums me out because the time I needed him to be my running buddy was 10 years ago. Like, this is so unhelpful now. So he'll be like, hey, do you want to run? And I'll And he'll be like, I'm going to do eight tomorrow. And I'm like, that's so good for you. Good for you. Um, I will do three of those eight, (laughs) maybe four. And my knees are fucked, like fucked. And we're not running fast at all, but I just don't really, I think, so my thought process is this, both I'm heavier, like I have more muscle, like it, you you wouldn't be a runner and a CrossFitter because it doesn't make sense. You're supposed to be like lean muscle and as light as possible and that's how you're fast. And I've gained muscle. So I'm both heavier because of muscle, but I'm also just heavier because of mostly Evan's fault. Like, just a lot of dessert. I've had a lot of dessert in the last year. So I'm a heavier person, but I'm also an older person, right? It'd be like if um, if I drank which I don't do, right? Like if I, st- like I haven't drank for like over 10 years, if I started drinking now and I'm like, usually I would have two beers and it wouldn't affect me. And th- now I'm just like, oh, I have half a beer and I am messed up and I have the worst hangover. So it feels like I'm having like knee hangover from not running because my knees hurt for a day, like just stairs in either direction are rough and just walking, I can feel them. So, of course, when you start running, like, uh, uh, Googling knee pain, it's all just like, it could be, you know, runner's knee. It could be this. And I was like, nah, man, this isn't, I've had runner's pain. This is every time this is, so the Google is, um, <laughs> knees sore after running after 40. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, it just kept giving, <laughs> it just kept giving me that, like, like 40. I love how you always, like, round up. You're like, but anyway, so you're but not it's, 40, though, right? No, I'll be 40 next year. Can I'm. You make a thing uh, of it? Huh? Am I going to make a thing of it? No, should we? Should we make a thing of it? Oh, I don't know. Thing? I don't know. Or I definitely I... think this. What? Make a banner? Talk to Travel my cat? Travel Greece with you? Bring <laughs> Evan? <laughs> should I celebrate you on a vacation that we do together? Um, yeah, so I have to. Is that not transparent? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I have to. I have to think about it. I mean, I definitely want to like. I don't like because I've been kind of not like a sack of shit on my birthday, but I have been kind of a little more Heidi. I don't want to talk about it, but I do think I should celebrate like my fortieth. Like, I think it's yeah. Mine I don't want to be locked down. Garbage. Yeah. So I'm celebrating vicariously through yours. Yeah, man. Let's do it. Um, but but I do like. I know it's not an even number, but like I do like that we're like. It's a good, it's a good mishmash. Um, 
some of my friends, they're like three years older. Some of my friends are, it's like a nice, anyway. Um, so I guess it was important for me to display to the internet that I am no longer, these knees are no longer young. They are getting older. Um, so, um, so one question that came up was, is it normal for your knees to hurt at 40? And it says, when you get into your 30s and 40s, they, um, there's often enough, accum- uh, enough cumulative wear and tear on the joints that you might start to feel aches and pains. Knee pain is a common problem. Um, one was like, how do, you, how do you make it not hurt? And it's like, don't do it. And it's like, fuck you guys. Um <laughs> Um, osteoarthritis causes pain and stiff knees, not just after running, but also during everyday activities. The condition develops when the cartilage that norm- normally pads the bones within the joints begins to wear down. Without enough padding, the bones no longer slide easily against each other, causing pain and swelling. <sighs> I don't know if this is just... So it I'm not like there's anything you can do about it. It feels like yeah. it's just like it's like that old Louis C. K. joke where like he goes to the doctor and he's like, Oh, my shoulder hurts, and he's like, Yeah, it just sucks now. He's like, if I was twenty, they would try to fix it and they would do God do this and da. But when he's like when you're forty, they're just like, Yeah, you just you you your shoulder your shoulder sucks now. Yeah, definitely. Because like I um and it's the same with the hyperflexibility I have in my toes. It's uh my my podiatrist was like it's counterintuitive, but using it more you know how they always say like use it or lose it using it more will actually hurt it more oh really so that's yeah it's not gonna help to like keep it in action and and stuff so it's just best to cushion it and i i think i remember hearing somewhere that knees are similar and that like moving your knees more i mean i think if you're building muscle around the knees to yeah protect the knees that way it's fine but as far as like it rubbing together like that's just gonna wear down For sure. And I guess the problem is like, in some ways I think I did, I, you know, I'm doing tons of squats and CrossFit. I'm doing all this stuff to build up the muscle around the knee. So it's just like, it should be over the years of not using it. It should be supported. It should feel supported. Um, but, (laughs) but I think, I don't know. I, the other thing, my other thought was I used to be incredibly diligent about changing my shoes. That was always the thing is you put these miles on your shoes. Just think of like a car where after, you know, what, 5,000 miles, you have to get your oil changed. Um, I feel like after you put a certain amount of miles on your shoes, you would have to get them changed. But I stopped running races and I think I've had these shoes for a while. So between like working out and doing little runs or whatever, maybe, because that's the other thing is you would start to have kind of pain because your your shoes are worn down and they're not doing their their little shoe job so i am going to get different shoes because it's been years i've just been wearing the same shoes because i don't run that much but now that i'm trying to start again so it might be a lost cause i might buy these running shoes and i mean i'll use them to work out but i don't know my first hope is that my knee pain is shoe related Okay, but it might, yeah, it's a good place to start, but it might, it might be, be just shit forever. It might be body related. And you can't, you know, I might have put too many miles on these knees. I would like to know any 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 older knee runners have any thoughts. Um, the other thing is I don't want to do damn like my mom had to get knee surgery when I was a kid. I don't remember how old she was, but it took forever to heal and I don't want to do that either. So I don't want to, if I'm, if my knees don't hurt when I don't run, then maybe it's walking and, and I'm fine with CrossFit. Like I'm fine with the squat. Like there's no, all the other activities I do to work out. I don't feel pain. I just, I started, I A, want to run with Sam, but B, I wanted, I started to kind of miss, started to miss it. Yeah. Um, well, I hope and I just start I crying. I'm just like, I'm just like, say it again. I wish I ever loved running. I wish God, there's nothing I hate more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I might, my body might be supporting that. So anyway, <laughs> no, that's never going to happen. <laughs> Why? Um, no. Oh yeah. You're not, you're not a water person. At I'm all. not a water. 
I'm not a water person. I'm not a strong swimmer, nor do I want to get better at it, nor do I like being wet, nor do I like having to wear a sh- like a, a swimmer's cap or I just everything yeah. about it. You're a true cat. Yeah, I really am. Um, thank you so much, guys. Uh, we appreciate you. We'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye.